right, so in this portion, we're going to talk about uh, the bias plus report for week 11. Last week, we're going to take a quick look at those games that we've already played, see how the bias held up, see how Ben's uh, predictions and defections from the bias held up. Uh, so let's get ready to kick that right off, Mr. Ben, with the Thursday night game. And when I wrote about this game, it should be banging. But I had no idea. <laughs> no idea. The bias plus score was 9.2, favored the Steelers because they had been playing pretty well with Mason. What happened? Ay, 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 ay. Well, first of all, I did make another idiotic statement last week by saying usually if I do well in the Thursday night game, it bodes well for me for the rest of the weekend. I really got to stop making statements like that. I picked Pittsburgh. <laughs> I picked Pittsburgh, and again, I'm going to take a little bit more time with my picks. I, I think I've been a bit frivolous because uh, I'm not really betting any real money. But uh, I, in my mind, I was thinking Pittsburgh's defense is taking the ball away like crazy. Secondary is flying all over the place. And Baker Mayfield and that offense for the Browns has been turning the ball over like crazy. Chubb is fumbling. Mayfield's throwing the ball all over the place. It's crazy. This should be a Steelers win. I had no idea that it was going to turn out the way that it did. Uh, Mason Rudolph was pretty much crappy. He threw, he threw four picks. Four. Threw four picks. Couldn't find his way in and out of the pocket to save his life. Got sacked four times. Threw for 200-something yards. It was awful. Not to mention James Conner gets hurt, so now they got basically no running game. And then two guys go out with concussions on helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits. It was a total disaster. Had nothing to do with me picking the game. I don't know if those things hadn't happened. If Pittsburgh would have won, I'm not even going to say that. It was just the wheels completely fell off for Pittsburgh. Completely. It was a mess. Uh, Baker Mayfield, on the other hand, wasn't much better. He only threw for 193 yards. He did throw for two touchdowns and run for one, which was good. He did seem to show a little bit better command of the offense. I questioned some of the calls coming from Freddie Kitchen, Kitchens, uh, but for the most part, Baker didn't turn the ball over. But some of his passes were very errant. Um, I don't know. Jory's still out on Baker Mayfield. You know, um – Chubb had a nice game, though. Thank God for Nick Chubb. 27 carries. That's real man carries for 92 yards, so good for him. Good for him. And, and uh, well, we know how it turned out. I don't know if everyone knows. I'll just let everyone – I'll make the announcement in case someone happens to be watching YouTube that, that missed out on all of that controversy. I don't know how, you, how it could happen. But at the very end of the game, with under 10 seconds, a big fight broke out. Um, the quarterback, um, what's his name again? Mason Rudolph. Mason Miles, Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. And get Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. Uh, Miles Garrett, a defensive end for the Browns. Mason Rudolph, quarterback for the Steelers, got into it, um, and. It resulted in Miles Garrett ripping the helmet off and trying to hit Mason Garrett over the head with it. Actually, he did hit him, but he hit it with the open area. And so he, uh, Miles Garrett, is going to be out the rest of this season pretty much. He just appealed uh, through the union um, his uh, his sentence, his NFL sentence. And uh, but I don't think the result had have come in yet. Any last words? We're getting ready to look at the Lions at the Cowboys. I have no last words. I'm ready to move on to the Lions and the Cowboys. Bias plus score, 11.2, favored the Cowboys. And that got it done. Boy, did he ever. Okay, so I picked Dallas. I got a win there. They did have the bias. 
So uh, this was a game that they should have handled, and they handled it extremely well. Um, Dak threw for crazy 444 yards. Crazy. Three touchdowns. No interceptions. Great job by Dak. Worked well in the pocket. Looked good. Um, with Matt Stafford out, uh, it's going to be tough for Detroit. Um, they really don't really have much of a running game either. They have backs that they can throw the ball to, but uh, without Matt Stafford, they're not going anywhere. So, all righty. Much about them. So the uh, bias held on that one. Yep. Moving right along here. Next up, uh, one of the teams that sort of uh, is really uh, looking like they want to do something. And the other one, we don't know what they want to do. The Jaguars, I don't know what they want to do. Nick Foles is back, looked good coming out the gate through that touchdown, and that was it. And uh, the Colts, they have Jacoby back. Uh, they were favored by a small 1.5 score on the Bias Plus last week. Correct. And the Bias Plus was correct, and so was I. I took Indianapolis. Um, Two quarterbacks coming back off of injury. Uh, Foles, I thought, actually looked good considering he's coming back off injury and an injury that kept him out for almost the entire season. Um, that being said, he, he threw almost through for 300 yards, threw for two touchdowns, and um, he only got picked once. So he was pretty sharp. Um, did have a good number of incompletions. Uh, I don't remember any drop passes, but he, he kind of misfired a few times. But that's to be expected. You know, he only had like a week of real practice with the number one offense uh, before going out there. Um, Jacoby was, again, game manager, threw for one touchdown, ran for one touchdown. His numbers were low. They were efficient. They ran the ball well. Uh, fantasy note, Marlon Mack has a fractured hand. I believe he just had surgery on his hand today. Uh, he will be out indefinitely. Um, I hope that doesn't bleed over into the playoffs because I'm pretty sure, <clears throat> excuse me, Indianapolis is going to make the playoffs. However, Jonathan Williams steps up and on like 13 carries had a hundred something yards. It was crazy. Now, Let's not be fooled. Last week, Devontae Freeman for the Falcons went down, and Brian Hill came in and ran for some absurd number of yards. <laughs> and then after that, the, the next week, which would have been this past weekend, stunk it up like he never played football before. So, but, but Jonathan Williams has been around. I didn't look him up, but I think he's been on a couple of other teams already. He has never, as far as I know, been a starter. He's always been a backup. So this could get a little tricky, or he could actually be the new bell cow for the Colts. And considering the Colts' offensive line, I would venture to think that he's going to do pretty well while Marlon Mack is out. They, uh, the offensive line got some love um, on uh, media and TV. They were, they were showing these guys. And, you know, I think they did the kegger, kegger at, uh, at the end of the. Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. The, the keg stand. Scenario. <laughs> so that, that worked out really well. But um, they're very mobile. Uh, they're, they're, they're athletic. They get out and they put, they move the pile. You know, and they'll move it yes. in whatever direction that uh, you want it to be moved in. So, uh, let me get my, my thing here. Okay, let's move right along. Bills at Dolphins. Favoring the Bills by a plus score of 20.5. And again, last week we were doing averages. So, some of these numbers might be a little smaller than if you looked earlier in the season. And actually, they'll be smaller than what's coming up because this is the end of the, uh, the week 12 ends the bye week. So all the numbers can, will be gross. We don't have to average anything out. 20.5 favoring the bills. 
Yeah, this one was easy. Um, I really like the Bills. Uh, the, the, the question was if their offense could generate enough points to keep them in games uh, because the defense was pretty much doing the job holding teams down. Uh, their offense is getting better. Uh, Josh Allen, at quarterback, is doing a lot better. The um, running game has kind of shifted from Frank Gore over to uh, David Singletary. Um, but um, they're kind of the same guy. Singletary's younger. He's a little faster um, than Gore. But um, their run game is plotting, I guess is the best word to say it. But they do move the chains. Um, I just I just like Josh Allen. I've had him on a couple of fantasy teams. And he's been holding it down for me. Um, obviously, they played the Dolphins. But he threw a very efficient 21 for 33, 256 yards, three touchdowns. And he ran for one. So that's four touchdowns he accounted for. Now, again, yes, it was the Dolphins. But um, – I really like the Bills. The Bills are going to be scary. And if the Patriots cannot, cannot sleep on the Bills, I'm telling you, they better not. They just, uh, I, I don't, <laughs> I like the Bills. All right. You like the Bills. Let's move right along. Next up, the Broncos went up against the Vikings. Vikings were favorite, had a bias plus score of 11.1. Vikings. And that held also. Yeah, that one was pretty easy, too. Um, Denver's got a good D, but the Vikings' offense is really improving. Kirk Cousins broke the 300-yard mark again, through for three scores. Uh, the funny thing is, somehow they fell behind 20 to nothing to Denver. I don't know what happened. I didn't watch the whole game. I was kind of watching two other games at the same time and trying to check on scores and stuff. But nonetheless, uh, big plays by Stefan Diggs and Kyle Rudolph. Fantasy fans, always leave Kyle Rudolph on the waiver wire. Well, if you snatched him up about three, four weeks ago, he's paid div dividends for you at the tight end position. Um, yeah, good job by them. Dalvin Cook uh, actually didn't do anything. So, again, the Denver de defense is no slouch. They were able to slow down a guy that nobody else has been able to slow down. Unfortunately, Kirk Cousins made him pay. All righty, all righty. Uh, so we held up on that one. Also, moving right along here, Saints at Bucks. Bias plus score, 5.6 favored the Saints, and it held. What do you think? Yeah, um... This one wasn't an easy win, but I did get the win. I called on the Saints. I'll be darned if I ever pick the Bucks over the Saints. It just doesn't seem right. It's a division game. And the Saints as a team are far better than the Bucks as a team. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. By the way, again, fantasy note, and it's not even really a note. If you're lucky enough to have Mike Thomas on your team, which I have him on some of my – you know, secondary fantasy teams, but not on my main ones. I am severely jealous. Mike Thomas is a beast. He cannot be stopped, okay? And anybody that thinks Julio Jones is better than him, you better think again, because Julio Jones is not number one in, in my eyes anymore. Mike Thomas is the man. Uh, so tell me how you really feel about Mike Thomas. <laughs> 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 the Saints have a lot to talk about on offense. Drew Brees is starting to feel it. Kamara is still who he is, you know. All right, moving right along, we have the Jets at the Washington team that needs to change their name. TTN, TCTN. <laughs> I guess the bias couldn't win here one way or the other. We were, Unless they tied, we were going to be wrong. And so that probability, I actually calculated that against us. I could have I could have calculated that for the bias plus, but I, I went with the negative on that. Um, and um, who took care of that? The Jets. Well, I I I <laughs> – I picked the Jets to win, and they did, so I took care of it. 
Ah, okay. All right. All right. Okay. I got that one. Sam Darnold looked like the Sam Darnold everybody's been waiting for and has seen glimpses of. 293 yards passing. That's pretty good. Now, yeah, I know. It was Washington. But uh, Darnold looked good, threw for four touchdowns, only got picked once, didn't see any ghosts, so that was good for him. Meanwhile, uh, Washington tried to join Haskins back out there, and he pretty much looked like uh, a college junior playing in the NFL. He got his first touchdown passing, though. Great. Yeah, well, you know, you always remember your first, man. Come on now. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I remember catching my first touchdown in the projects in North Philadelphia. Go Jackson <laughs> Projects. Got my first touchdown on the big boys. I've been loving football oh. ever since. People don't oh, wait understand. A this was your this was your first touchdown where the older guys let you play? Absolutely. There you go. Okay, that's big. Yeah, that's yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's and big. probably that's why nobody stuck me. <laughs> Nobody covered me. Let that guy go. Yeah, let the young boy go. (laughs) But you never forget your first man. So, um, but he's going. They're going with him the rest of the way. You know, they they basically have to. Uh, They gotta. They have to. All right, Carolina favored by bias plus of nine. And the Falcons looked like they were pretty much on the ropes looking for a first-round draft pick. What the heck happened here? It's funny. Ha-ha funny? Or it's kind of ha-ha funny. funny. No, it's not ha-ha funny. It's weird funny. Twilight Zone funny. Exactly. Exactly. So the Falcons have, like, what, three wins? Somewhere in there. I can okay. Look them up real quick. Those those three wins are against teams that there's no way they should have won the game. <laughs> this past one against Carolina, they beat the Eagles, and they beat the Saints. Like, what the heck is going on? Well, you know, when you look at um, when you look at the, uh, the where they stand, okay, the Falcons are nineteenth. And scoring at 22 points a game. So that and actually Ryan had a really good game. That actually pushed them ahead of the Bills, the Chargers, the Giants, the Titans, the Steelers, Browns, Jaguars, a number of those teams, the Bears, okay, are, are in that group. And they're, they're just below the Raiders, the Cardinals, the Colts, the Panthers, in that 22-point range. So they can put some points up. Now, if their defense shows up, that's a whole nother thing. Just going down the uh, the list here for Falcons, they're coming in at 26. So they're at 26.2 points a game. So you can see that they've been losing more than they've been winning, but they can score. But, but again, that's, that's, that's the twilight zone part of it, I think, right there when you talk about the defense. If you rank 26 in points against, you're in the lower echelon. You're, you're, you're borderline – bad okay but for some reason in those three wins they stood up and they got the wins they kept McCaffrey pretty much under control in a game where I thought he was going to run wild he still put up good fantasy numbers but I thought he was going to like blow up the internet and right right. it all right next up uh, what do we? Oh man, look. Let me tell you something. Didn't expect, <laughs> did not expect the Ravens to do what they did. They had the, they were favorite. They had a bias plus score seven point two. Not a big one. Not one. It was like threes in the twenties last week. So three bias pluses that were in the twenties um, in that in that area. Expected it to be a lot closer. Expected Deshaun to play a lot better. What happened there? What did you see? Uh, well, um, I think when we talked about this game last week and I did pick Baltimore to win, 
Uh, I think I said something along the lines of I trust the Ravens defense a little bit better than I trust the Texans defense. And I think you actually looked at the numbers after I said that and it kind of bore itself out. Um, That's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I believe my thought process was Deshaun can keep them in the game considering their secondary is pretty weak, but he can keep them in the game if they're able to slow down the Ravens run game. They were not able to slow down the Ravens run game, which meant now not only can we pretty much do what we like to do anyway, if you're a Raven, but we can also exploit them through the air when we want to, which completely keeps them off balance. There's nothing Deshaun could do about that. It was just, it was just too much. They were all over him. They rushed him hard. I don't know how, I can't remember how many sacks they had, but he was under duress the entire game. They had little to no run game. There was no balance. Once the score started going up, what are you going to do? It, it was it was a, an interesting game. I think it was my intriguing game of the week. So that there is a blog at the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings on that game. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Deshaun is just, is, is he's got to, he's got to be able to get rid of the ball faster. Um, I was accusing him of running. You straightened me out about that. He's trying to stay in that pocket, but that mm-hmm. pocket is not popping for him right now. Uh, he's going to have to do a little running and I understand that's what some of the media people are expecting in the upcoming week, which we'll talk about in the next segment, the bias plus report for week 12 but right now, we're looking at week 11, Cardinals at Niners, the bias plus. I talked about those 20-plus scores. Favorite the Niners, but it was a little scarier than that. <laughs> well, uh, Kyler is scary. Uh, he threw for two touchdowns, and he ran for a touchdown. But his numbers were very, very low, which means – there were a lot of bad passes. Um, he just needs more help, man. And against a team like the Niners that have a, a solid defense that's just not going to let you really pick them apart and march up and down on the field, I mean, they did well to move the ball as they did, basically on his running ability at all. He ran for like almost 70 yards. He ran for 67 yards. So that's that's a, a, a fair day for starting running back, let alone your quarterback. Um, if you need that much from him, it's going to be tough for them to win games as it has been. Um, you know, the Niners are just far better than they are. <laughs> well, it took Garoppolo to, to really put some good numbers together passing, and uh, they, they did that, you know, secondarily. But, uh, I, you know, it's going to be interesting watching the development uh, there in, in, in Arizona. Bengals at Raiders, bias plus score, 11.4 favorite, the Raiders. And the Raiders yeah. came through for us. I'm starting to really like the Raiders. They're fun to watch. Uh, Derek Carr is doing really well. Uh, I like the way Gruden's calling the game. I think some people were questioning him coming out of the TV booth and going back onto the field as to whether uh, the game had possibly passed him by. But I tell you what, man, that guy's got – he's he's got quite an offensive mind on him. And, um, yeah, he's he's not hurting them a bit. Uh, okay, talk about efficiency. Derek Carr, 25 of 29 for 292 and a touchdown. He did get picked off once. I think he he was under duress on one and, and just tossed up one that he shouldn't have. Um, other than that, the guy looked good. He looked really good. Cincinnati is who they are. Swiss cheese defense, can't stop a soul. Uh, playing with a backup quarterback who actually doesn't stink. That kid, I think his name is Finley. Yeah, he's not, um, he's not terrible. I think Andy Dalton might be on his way out. Uh, not because they just, you know, not because he stinks, but because they can get something for him. And Finley might be able to hold down the fort and they draft a quarterback early. There's a lot of good quarterbacks coming out of the draft this year. That seems to kind of be their plan. Um, 
And, you know, they were part of, they were tanking for Tua, but now he, he got his hip busted up. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. But there's a bunch of good quarterbacks that should be coming out. So um, I believe that's the plan. Somebody the Raiders can, um, are uh, 19th in net points at minus 25. So not bad. Still, you know, well, it ain't great either. Minus they're in that they're in that realm. However, uh, when I look at them offensively, they are 18th. So that's again somewhere in the lower part of the middle of the pack. And defensively, the Raiders are 21st. So yeah, they got you know they got to pick up their game if they want to teams that are generally going. to Yeah, but on but on the bright side for the Raiders. Um... Right now, all they care about is that division. And they're looking at San Diego. I keep calling them San Diego. They're looking at the Chargers, and they're looking at the Chiefs. And they're licking their chops. And I think they're playing both down the stretch. So they can handle their business head-to-head and make the playoffs. And that's goal number one for them. So any, by any means necessary is what's going on for the Raiders right now. Now, let me see something here. You mentioned uh, the upcoming games. And uh, what are we talking about? It's the Oakland Raiders, right? So that is correct. To the Oakland, have they, it. They're not in there. So, yeah, they got left right. on their schedule. The Jets, the Chiefs, Titans, Jaguars, Chargers, and Broncos. Exactly. And they, they are all winnable games. Exactly. Maybe the only ones that you might question a little bit here relative to whether it's winnable for the Raiders. Well, they could uh, find themselves in the top third if, if they get through that, that little section pretty nicely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Patriots at Eagles, bias plus score. That's one of those 20 area ones we talked about. 19.9 favorite, the Patriots and the bias held. Thank you, Mr. Eagles. Yes, the bias held. I picked the Patriots to win. Um, I hope that I wouldn't get too much blowback from Eagles fans, but uh, they were pretty meek on this one. You know, they talked tough. Oh, well, you know. Brady's getting old, blah, blah, blah. We can win this game. It's at home, blah, blah, blah. They're just not good enough, man. Their receiving core is decimated. It's basically it's Ertz and that's it. Um, Carson Wentz does not seem to be playing with confidence, which is also not a good thing for them team-wise. And the running game is still a shambles. They got a guy named Boston running the ball. Uh, Howard is hurt. They're still not using Sanders the way that they should, I believe. Um, it's funny, when Sproles was the third down back, you could barely get the guy off the field. He was guaranteed to get X number of carries and or catches per series. And now you have a younger, taller, just as fast version of him, and you don't use it. So once again, you know, Deuce Staley is only killing himself as far as getting promoted to an offensive coordinator, if you ask me. But that's another conversation. Uh, Brady Brady is struggling a little bit. If he can be had, if the Patriots can be had, this is the year that it can happen. Okay? People were predicting he was just going to fall off a cliff. He ain't falling off a cliff, but he got one foot kind of slipping. (laughs) His numbers are not efficient. And they're not big numbers. And that's why I said, you know, although it's going to be tough to overtake them in the net points category because they're up so high, um, when we're talking about wins and losses, it's going to get a little little shaky for them here at the end. Um, well, they, got, they have another um, NFC East matchup coming up, and we're going to talk about that. That'll help them. <laughs> <laughs> or or maybe it won't. I'm not sure. Oh, oh. Man, I don't I'm wondering about that. We'll talk about that. Bears at Rams. Bias plus pretty small favorite the Rams and Trubisky. Can I say my phrase? Yep. Trubisky it up. <laughs> Trubisky it up. 
There seems to be some controversy in Chicago. The starting quarterback got pulled, I think, somewhere in the beginning of the middle of the third quarter. I forget exactly where, but it's the middle of the game. Um, they showed him and the head coach having a bit of a real close conversation, hands on his shoulders, right up to his ear, so nobody else could hear what they were talking about before they had him sit down. Uh, personally, I think Chase Daniels should have got a shot the week before, but um, somehow, some way, it got blamed on some mysterious injury. They got to be. It's, they got to be honest with themselves, man. Right now, this guy ain't getting it done. Now, I know you made the investment as the number one quarterback. You might want to hang on to him because of the investment. But if you want to win games, you do better to put Chase Daniel in there. You really would. Uh, that being said, I basically took the Rams mostly because I thought that their offense was efficient enough to keep the Chicago defense, which I think is still really good, at bay simply because the Chicago offense would not score enough or would not be able to keep up in the scoring. Um, I turned out to be right, but, I mean, neither one of these teams is anything to write home about. I'm sorry. They're talking about Khalil Mack not having too good of a season. Not, wait, 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 wait. Not having too good of a season as okay. overall? Yeah. Well, he was playing like gangbusters the first six, seven, eight games. This is only game 12 coming up. Like, what happened? Well, if that was the first six, seven, eight, then the last six, seven, <laughs> five, six <laughs> might be what they're talking about. Um, I, I have to look at his numbers, but the, uh, probably what's going on is if he hasn't gotten a sack or two per game, then they're looking at that as being bad. and. Especially for him. Uh, yeah, especially for him. And also, unfortunately, they need that from him to be able to compete. And then the other thing that I'm hearing, and we'll talk about this in the next portion of Week 12 on the Bias Plus report, uh, they might be just looking to have Trubisky start taking off a little bit more. I mean, let's run some option or some, something like that. Because if, if you don't think he's your future – then you don't have to worry about risking him. You might as well go for broke and let him do what he's good at. You know, he can run, you know. He can run. He and can run. He's throwing the ball, and, you know, that might be – at least that might help keep them in the running this season or get them somewhere in the running relative to that because the Bears right now are 18th. So they're right above the Raiders at minus five. So if the Raiders have a shot with minus 25 on the net points, the Bears got a shot. But that's a tough division to have to be, you know, uh, knuckleheading it up. Now, now that you mention that, they probably would do better if they ran an offense that was similar to the Buffalo Bills offense. Not put so much pressure on the quarterback to win games by throwing the ball. Let him become a part of the running game. Oh, yeah, that, that's actually a good idea. They got the same kind of players. Um, plotter. At running back, um, one good long ball threat. Um, the Bills, it's, it's John Brown. And um, for the Bears, it's Allen Robinson. Um, yeah, very similar. Very similar. Very interesting. Very. Interesting. Well, you put that on the coach. Uh, coach, we've had some questions about the coach. Yep. <laughs> we yep. have. Put that on the coach. Speaking of putting it on the coach, we also put something on the coach with the Chargers. They were hosting the Chiefs. The Chiefs had a bias plus of four. And we were talking about how Kyler Murray is protecting the ball. And now they're talking about how Phillip Rivers is turning the ball over. <laughs> the old veteran who you expect to be efficient, decisive at the very least, is – Tossing the thing up, you know, with his eyes closed or something. What's going on, man? I, okay, so I saw the game the week before. I didn't like the way the ball was coming out of his hands. The motion's always been funky, but it's always been – he's always been an efficient quarterback. Smart, savvy, blah, 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 whatever you want to say. 
This year, not so much. But I picked the Chargers to win, thinking they're home. They're going to clean up some mistakes. The running game looks better. If the defense can just kind of keep the Chiefs kind of under control, everything will be fine. They look so good at, at times. And I don't want to say nothing bad about this particular coach because uh, we're at least his offensive coordinator. I'm not sure if he calls the plays or not. I thought they had a really good mix of run and pass. Uh, Gordon's getting it done on the ground. Eckler gets it done on the ground and through the air, especially through the air, because you can line up Eckler anywhere you want. Um, Henry's a good tight end. I think they should have got gone to him a little bit more in this game. But the bottom line is they made too many mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you're going to lose games, especially if those mistakes turn into turnovers. And that's what's been happening to them. And I, I can't say anything else. I, I can't defend them. It's tough. Uh, I want to share, Ben, and because we can kind of – no, I can't do this right now. We'll do this in a second. But I was just looking – Chargers, uh, points per game, 21st in the league, just below the Bills, just one, basically a tenth of a, a point above the Giants. Uh, 20 yeah, that's, that should not be. That should not be. They should be far higher. Now, their defense is 11th, okay? So right. they're, they're trying to hold up their end under a lot of turnovers. And I'm going down the turnover scenario here. Oh, that's ridiculous. 28th with minus nine in turnover differential. There's your answer. There's your answer right there. You cannot win ball games giving the ball to the other team. I don't care how good your defense is. You're not going to win ball games giving the ball to the other team. So their defense is playing under duress week after week after week. How long do you expect them to hold up? And last week, what was my big comment about the Chargers? I questioned their commitment to the run. Yes. They really need to run the ball. Phillip Rivers is playing this bad. They really need to get that run established, whether it's Eckler or, or um, what's his other name? Why am I forgetting his name? You know what I'm talking about. Gordon. Melvin Gordon. Gordon, right, from Wisconsin. Whether either one of them. And especially in third and, you know, potentially three, four yards, something like that. Yeah. You're on the other side of the field where you might go for it on fourth down if you can get, you know, fourth and one, fourth, whatever. I mean, they really – and, I mean, they do need a little more, you know, in their run game, just trying to run it up the middle or whatever, especially in those short goal line types of situations. So they need a little more um, – creativity in their run game, but they definitely need to lean on that thing that I, the rivers out a little bit. I agree they could use more creativity, but even the plays that they call, they've been fairly successful. They just need to do it more. They like need, they yeah. need to lean on it more because they're, they, they're, they're not going to have a good balance if those plays that Phillip Rivers used to make before on third and two, he can't make them anymore. We're getting ready to wrap this section up. We just went through all of the games played last week, and this is – most of the time I don't put the entire net point, Sterling net point rankings up for everyone to see, but I wanted to make sure that I had it in a format that made sense and you could actually kind of look at it all together. And uh, so here we are, everything we've been talking about relative to where these teams are falling relative to net points from the first – where the Patriots are in that small, that, that strong first place, followed by the Ravens and, and the Niners, my beloved Niners, all the way to 32nd place on the right. You'll see the Dolphins at minus 166, which is why it's always a surprise when the Dolphins win. <laughs> hmm. And you got to love it when they do. I mean, you know, because those guys, I mean, just uh, a season that like they've had, it, the, the season under the rest. You see the Bengals, you see the Washington team that needs to change their name all in uh, triple-digit minus numbers. So that's the bottom of the bottom. But then you see where everybody else falls in. And what we always try to say, again, 
It's one thing when you're looking at matchups week to week, but when you're just trying to get an idea, who's your power players in the league? Who are those teams that are going to more than likely fall somewhere in that playoff hunt? That's the teams that are on your right, and more than likely you're talking about somewhere in the top 10 to 12. So that's pretty much uh, an idea about who the power players in the league are. We're going to wrap up the review portion of the game. Ben, any last uh, points you want to make uh, about the review? Uh, just that I only had three losses, and only one of them was against the Bias Plus. Oh, okay, okay. All right. The Bias went had three losses also. I calculated that out to uh, a 78.5% win ratio. So that's pretty good for an unmanaged, unbiased, no conjecture, no opinion, straight <laughs> numbers type ranking, which is the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus reports. That uh, completes the review for week 11. Next up, the Bias Plus report for upcoming week 12. And I know for my Niners band, it's going to start to get a little scary this last Nah, you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. So he says, all right. Mm -hmm.